look at all these unplayable Melfi lists on YouTube.com. Ugh, it makes me sick. But the community deserves a better class of deck builder. Someone who clearly understands the mechanics of each individual archetype, and would never upload an entire video filled with a subpar or unplayable version of a proven strategy. That's why, today, I'll be presenting Melfi. Good afternoon, Jank enthusiasts! I'm MBT, and this is 10 Minute Testing. It's no secret I've been avoiding Melfi. The deck's adorable, yes, but if cuteness were the only determining factor about what videos I make, I'd just be a Skyfire fan cam channel by now. However, the new release of Negalogia and Excited have given teeth to this toothless by design archetype. So without further ado, brace for pastel. It's time for Melfi. Before we begin, if you're on the fence about subscribing, let me sweeten the pot for you. Click that little button below the video and I promise I will personally adopt an adorable dog for consistency's sake. So here's the list, and the MELFs among you may realize there's a lot missing from my 40. Don't worry, I'll explain. As always, I'll give you a background about the archetype, a little bit of a discussion about what I hope the deck can do, and of course, the card by card. But first, this video is sponsored by Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck. Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Deck is an online strategy site for our mutual favorite card game. It's got a deck builder, card database, and a wealth of strategy articles. It's also where I post the Quarantine Series deck breakdowns, so give it a look at www.ygoprodeck.com. So with that, let's ooh get in to Melfi. Melfi's an archetype of nauseatingly cute pastel animals who all summon themselves from the hand at your end phase and tag out when your opponent summons a monster or targets them for an attack. After that, each one does something different. Puppy summons a beast from deck, Caddy adds a beast to hand, Fenny summons a beast from hand, and Pony adds a beast from the graveyard. Together they form a resource loop that accesses beast-specific pops and negation via Kalamtosa, Hoppeared Squadron, and the like. And because so many of the peripheral monsters are tuners, the good ol' Halk Selene access code line puts in a lot of work winning the game on turn 3. Now, as you'd expect, of any archetype with a coherent identity and a novel form of interaction, it's got some problems. Namely, what the hell are you supposed to do with their normal summon? Their Xyz, Melfi's of the Forest, is extremely strong, and their stars line up well for Nurturia Beast, but how do you get there? We're playing Rescue Cat, Nimble Beaver, and Obedience Schooled as starters, with the primary goal of setting up Forest Lines ASAP, but the occasional auto-win by virtue of Nachuria Beast. This leaves us extremely open to Ash, but since Cat sends for cost, we can also slip the best hand trap NA into the list in Gamma. Finally, since the starters are so self-contained, and do so much in terms of enabling our linear plays, we can use the remaining free space not to shove in all manner of unplayable garnets, looking at you, every Melfi list on YouTube, but to play hand traps that'll give us a shot of winning the game on the draw. So with that, let's get into the card by card. First, the hand traps. 3 Ash Blossom, 3 Gamma and a Driver, and 3 Effect Veiler. Next, the starters, 3 Rescue Cat, and 3 Nimble Beaver. I know you're going to send me to the Shadow Realm for not playing a cat setup into Nat Beast, but trust me, almost every time you fire this card off, you want to make Forest, not Nat Beast. And the two Garnets responsible brick you to no end. Next are the Lil Cuties, 3 Puppy who sets up Kalamtosa, 3 Caddy who sets up Hopiard, and 1 Fenny and 1 Pony to loop Disruption. Finally, our summonable and addable targets, 2 Kalamtosa, 1 Hopiard, and a Yoko Tuner, a Nat Beast Setupper, and a... <sighs> Halk Starter and Zoo King, a.k.a. Pancratops 2. For Spells and Traps, we're on 3 Obedience Schooled, 3 Called, 1 Seek, 1 Upstart, and 3 Infip. In the Extra, we're on Nat Beast and Herald, Negalogia, Excited, 2 Forest, Skycab, Ronin Raccoon, Access Code, Unicorn, Selene, Phoenix, Cerberus, Halk, and Mrs. Radiant. So with that, let's jump into the games. We're starting off in the deep end. Our first match is up against Sacred Beast Eldlich, though it appears to be splashing a small spiral package? Why would- oh, it's a Delta deck. Okay, now I understand. They're going to lead with a copy of Seven Spirit Gates Unleashed in order to add from deck to hand a copy of Dark Beckoning Beast, which they will then normal. They'll activate its effect, adding a Chaos Summoning Beast to hand, then proceed to Extra Normal, Link for Link Haribo, activate Seven Spirit Gates effect to go into an anima, and make Curious. This is a perfect time to deploy the effect failure, which we will do, making our opponent activate the Graveyard Effect of Eldlich and make a puny 2 mat Appaloosa. Well, this should be no problem for the Zoo King Alpha, so we'll summon him and then activate the effect, prompting the negation and allowing us to walk over it for 2200. No big deal, we can easily get into a winning position with this Rescue Cat. We'll activate the Rescue Cat in order to get a puppy and a caddy from deck, which we will overlay for a forest. We'll activate Forest's effect in order to add a puppy to hand, then proceed to end phase, at which point we will summon both a Fenny and a puppy from our grip. Not really playing around anima optimally here. 
Our opponent's going to start their second turn the same way they started the first, with a Dark Beckoning Beast and a Seven Spirit Gates unleashed. They'll activate the effect, pitching the Dark Beckoning Beast they added to go into a Cerberus off of a Chaos Summoning Beast from Graveyard. We'll go into a Kalamtosa to get this Link Monster off the field, but we will, unfortunately, lose our Zoo King Alpha. They will go for a Chaos Summoning Beast from Graveyard, followed by the effect in Graveyard of both Link Haribo and Eldlich, summoning both of these and prompting a Fenny from me. We'll summon the Beaver, but more importantly, Forest will prevent this Eldlich from attacking our monsters. They'll go to Battle Phase and walk over the beaver, but we should be able to win from this position easily. We draw an Obedience Schooled, just a little late. We'll go for Forest here in order to get a copy of Hide and Seek. We'll fire off said Hide and Seek and shuffle a bunch of cards back into our deck. After we do that, we rip off the top. Ooh, a Hop Eared. We'll overlay for an Excited Melfi's and then activate its effect, proceeding to Battle Phase, prompting the Link Haribo, and then getting in directly for 2k. In Main Phase 2, we'll overlay for Negalogia and activate Puppy's Effect at End Step. We'll pass it back to our opponent, who for turn draws a Called by the Grave. Frustrating. They'll activate Unleashed, get Unleashed, and then Unleashed, get back this Chaos Summoning Beast, and at which point we will puppy for a Kalamtosa. I go for the seven spirit gates, they chain called, and unfortunately we do have a Kalam in the graveyard. No big deal. As they go for the Eldritch, I figure, yeah, as soon as they make anything with this monster, it's time for Negalogia. We send the entire board, and our opponent is forced to pass. Well, we should be able to win from here. We're going to normal summon a Mind Mole and get in for lethal. Our second match is up against Adamancipator. I know! I'm shocked too. Our opener is fantastic. Obedience Schooled plus Hand Traps plus a follow-up Rescue Cat is exactly where we want to be. We're going to lead with a copy of Obedience Schooled, summoning a 2, a 2, and a Yoko Tuner from deck. That's going to enable a Synchro Summon of Naturia Beast and a follow-up Rescue Cat, which will turn into a Caddy and a Puppy. We're going to overlay those two for a Melfi of the Forest, whose effect we will activate to search the last remaining Puppy, which we will summon at end step. This is multiple pieces of interaction, but if any deck can punch through it, it's going to be Ad Emancipator. They're going to lead with the Guardian. I shotgun the Puppy into a Kalamtosa, but unfortunately activate four in the same resolution chain, giving my opponent a fantastic guardian hit. I'm just not a very responsible pet owner. They'll activate Supplier afterwards, and then the Nat Drawn Researcher! They'll activate the effect of Researcher finding off the top... Ugh, Bait of the Magnet Warrior. Afterwards, they'll fire off the Nat Drawn Seeker! Must be nice to not even need Block Dragon. Can we get a whiff at least? Oh, we did. Okay, I'll stop complaining. Next, they're going to overlay for a copy of Gallant Granite and then fire off its effect. I figure if I can prevent an appearance of Block Dragon, I probably should do so. Afterwards, they're going to link summon a Halk of Fibrax to summon from deck a copy of O-Line, and then afterwards... Oh. Okay. Um. Everyone seen this combo before? They're going to Cerberus to destroy our copy of Naturia Beast before Synchro summoning a copy of Raptite, activating its effect and finding off the top... A Researcher, which is only okay as they've already activated the effect. It does enable a summon of Union Carrier, which can equip this Raptite with a Block Dragon. I actually think we might be able to beat this. We're going to lead with a copy of Zoo King Alpha. We'll activate Zoo King Alpha's effect, putting everything problematic back in our opponent's hand. They'll chain the effect of Raptite, but no big deal. As Block Dragon goes to the graveyard, my field is empty, so I can activate the Gamma in hand to negate it. After that, I'll fire off an Upstart Goblin, and God, we are just so close to winning the game outright. We'll help for a copy of Valor, but unfortunately can't go into Selene. There's only two spells in the graveyard. We'll go ahead and banish that token before attacking for 13, and then at end step, activating the hand effect of Puppy. I kind of have to hope my opponent's of gas, and I know they have block dragons at their disposal. They'll fire off an unexpected die for an angel trumpeter. We'll activate puppy here. I just want to get all the rocks off their side of the field. Any lurking out emancipators make this very crusty. They're going to go from block dragon into IP Mascarena. Thankfully, we did draw the ash blossom, so we get one more turn of reprieve. They're going to summon two block dragons, a unicorn, fire off the unicorn effect, and then, oh my god, another block dragon to make access code talker. Well, they are out of earths in graveyard, and more importantly, do not have lethal. We've got 200 life points to work with, and we're going to make them count. For turn we draw, ugh, Hop Ear. Okay, well, we'll special the Zoo King Alpha, then normal summon the Hop Ear, put our opponent's board back into their hand, which I don't think they have access to, and then summon Puppy at end step. For turn they draw, die, but they're out of targets. Things are shockingly looking pretty good. We're going to normal summon a copy of Hop Ear, and then go for Forest. We'll activate Forest Effect to get a copy of Hide and Seek. We'll fire off the Hide and Seek, tucking back a Puppy, a Kalamtosa, and a Hop Ear, drawing off the top a Beaver. That's pretty good for next turn. In main phase two, we can make a Negalogia, set a copy of called and as long as we survive we've got it they'll dark ruler and concede so it's time for game three and you know what that means a best of three versus meta our opponent's playing infer noble knight and our hand once again is killer now noticeably we don't have a follow-up to the obedience schooled so the best course of action is to make forest or 
If you are, as I am, governed by that old adage, A, B, G, always be greedy, you'll make the Cherry Beast and then activate Murphy Hide and Seek to try and draw a rescue cat off the top of the deck. Let's go! Okay. Well, it's in for Noble. They need to activate equips. Maybe we can prevent that from mattering. I'm going to Ash Blossom his copy of Neospace Connector. They're going to equip it with the Phoenix Blade. Fine, I'll negate that with Beast. And as they banish it for GPG, I realize I've been outplayed. Okay, well, GPG is going to equip this copy of Nat Beast, and they're going to get in directly for 800. I need to draw any starter off the top. Well, Upstart Goblin might be it. Oh, lo and behold, there's a Nimble Beaver. We're going to activate the effect of Beaver, they're going to activate GPG, and of course, we have an infinite impermanence. We'll negate its effect and then summon a Beaver from deck. After that, we're going to overlay for a copy of Excited. We'll go to the battle phase and attack over our opponent's Neospace Connector in main phase 2, going for a Negalogia. We'll pass it back to our opponent, who will proceed directly to the battle phase. They'll attack in a Negalogia, I'll activate its effect, chaining infinite impermanence, just to keep the zone off, I suppose. And then in main phase 2, they'll summon both a Red Layer and a Connector. As I see the Isold looming, I figure that we've lost this one. So it's time for game two and oh, come on. You gotta be kidding me. Well, we probably have one more draw step in us. Let's set two and pass. Our opponent's going to lead with a copy of Off the Top and Astolfo. They'll equip it with a copy of Durandal. Then they'll activate the effect of Durandal, which fetches an Ash Blossom from us. Afterwards, they will summon the CEO of Tempo Storm and go into Icehold. They'll activate the effect of Icehold and we'll flip up an infinite impermanence. They'll activate Astolfo's effect in Graveyard, then proceed to the battle phase, getting in for 1600. Okay, I need Obedience Schooled or Cat or... Anything but Kalimtosa. Kalimtosa! Alright. Our opponent's going to activate the effect of Icehold again. I figure we might as well infinite impermanence because we pretty much are dead if it's allowed to resolve. They'll go into a Link Cross and... Oh no, can they do it anyway? Did they draw a tuner? As I see the normal summon to Jet Synchron, I see that in fact, they can. They're going to go into an O-Line, and though it's a little bit crusty, they'll go from Martial Metal Marcher back into the O-Line, triggering the O-Line's effect to get a token and summoning it back as well. They're going to make a Roland by way of five stars of material before making a Roradon, turning themselves off of Links and getting a whole bunch of tokens in the process. They're going to Synchro summon a Savage Dragon, equipping it with a Hauka Fibrax, followed by a Jet Synchron activation in Graveyard, to summon, you guessed it, Omega. This is, unfortunately, the end of the game. So, we're back with the deck, and... Huh! Well, it's obviously not Tier 1, but it's at the very least playable. In a less Covidian world, I wouldn't even be surprised if it stole a top here or there. Let's do the pros and cons. First, the pros. One, the engine is self-contained. You've got immense flexibility in terms of space for hand traps, provided you don't have replay tuber disease and run 18 conditional one-ofs. Two, Negalogia does a ton of work. Simplifying the game state is an extremely important part of winning any Melfi game. If you can slow the match down to a position where cycling Callum Tosa is meaningful, you are way ahead. And nothing simplifies like excited into a send wipe. And three, these cards are so stinking cute. Finally, a power to match baby raccoon. And the cons. One, you have to open a starter. You do have nine ways to begin your plays, but if you don't find a cat, a beaver, or schooled, you're often left with four hand traps and a puppy, praying that it's enough. Two, a lot of the power is concentrated in Zoo King Alpha specifically. We got a couple of freebies because of people's unfamiliarity, but this card is going to be good soon, and people are going to mess up around him a lot less. And three, it sucks for cool interesting decks with unique playstyles to be absolutely consumed by the board-breaking bastard that is access code. I tried not to show it, but so many of your games are a fun turn one setup, a cool turn two navigation, and a mind-numbing turn three link climb into a board wipe. I don't think the card's broken, and I appreciate that it's accessible enough that most decks can play it, but I wish it won differently. All in all, this is a fun, unique, and most important of all, cute deck. I hope to see it represented in whatever competitive environment we have by the time the next set releases, but I don't think it'll be contending in Rise of the Duelist format. So that's that. As always, thanks to my patrons MeepMoto27, Dominic Ernst, Harrison Karp, Alex Perea, Blue Boy, Candyman, Crispy, Dim Sum 05, Innercrest, King Magic Ruler, Meteor Mirage, Mike Carlotti, Rose Lapine, Seeker, Space Dandy 1993, Sir Tachyon, Stevie Blunder, Tyler Slacks, Tyrese Biggums IV, 
Adam Trevino, Adrian Bra, Amit Elefandi, LG, Smarson Cavitius, Andrew Benson, Andrew Horseman Linderman, Angry Bread, Apex Systems, Billy Williams, Blake Root, Candide, Chad Bortz, Chibi Gohan, Torps Away, CJ Alex, Connor Kidd, Dan the Man Hoban, Darcy Taves, Devin Dees, Dylan Conley, Donnie Fillerup, Don Coro, Distrin, Emperor Stove, Ernesto Ibarra, Fighting Feng Wong, FUTR, Gamer Games, Gavin Charlie Gustavo Sicon, Isaac Jackson, Jane Linya, Jared Lorman, Jason Leonard, Jeff Leonard, Joel Du Radeau, Jose Luis Cortez, Kaibacorp Shill, Corey Hess, Kurakaze, Lavender Lemonade, Lawrence, Lucas Girdis, Lucky Number 5, Lucas Arizo Hansen, Meadow Edits, Meds for Feds, Mezzo Emrys, Michael Oskavarik, Muna Arashi, Moira Brown Wolf, Nick Extreme 99, Nick Dolores, Pro FP2, Pro Yugi Dad, Sam Soon, Second, Sophie Forster, Standards Objective, Swag Kage, Tim Holloway, Yuri's Best, Zach Janchuski, Zach McKee, Bleh, Dive Missile, Josh, Picnic Blasket, This Machine 237, TJ Steakhouse, and UKA. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to be part of the process, consider following me on Twitch as well. See you next time.